Grand Cayman in the city of Georgetown. Well, that's a wonderful port that I've been to a few times. I've been to Stingray City. I've been to hell. I've even sat on the beach, Seven Mile Beach, and enjoyed a bucket of beer with a bunch of friends. The only downside is that there's no dock there. You have to tender there and your porter call can be cancelled due to weather. It might be a nice sunny day, but the winds might have the weather too bad, the ocean might have too many waves, and the tenders just can't get there. Did you know there's a plan to build a dock? My name is Stuart. This is Ship to Shore Cruise News. Let's get into it. So for everybody who's gone to a tender port, uh, there's times when it gets cancelled because of the weather. The ocean's too rough for those tenders to make it. And it can be a bit of a downer. Um, you might have excursions planned, a day event with the family. You might have, you know, the excursion of a lifetime planned and it's all cancelled because of the weather. And some people get quite upset and take it out on guest services as if it's their fault. It's they control the weather, they made the decision. And unfortunately, people don't realize it's for their safety that we don't go into those ports. And unfortunately, Grand Cayman seems to be one of those ports that it happens to quite often. I just want to add a note that if you buy the excursion through the cruise line, they'll refund you, no problem. They'll refund you the, the, uh, the port fees as well. No problem. If you buy an excursion from a third party provider though, make sure you read the uh, terms and conditions before you go on that cruise because quite often they will refund your money as well. Uh, but just remember the cruise line's not gonna refund you that money for those third party excursions. Back in 2019, Grand Cayman did come in an agreement with the local port authority, a few Caribbean banks, Carnival Corporation and Royal Caribbean to create a dock. They were going to build a dock there that would hold up to four ships, including one Oasis class ship. That was the largest ship on the on the seas at that time, not the Icon, but it's still a large ship that they're planning on being able to dock there. They even went so far as to put it up to tender so people could bid on building this massive dock for the uh, tourism. The government went through the process of getting a environmental review as well and it turned out that there was a large chunk of coral reef that they're going to have to dig up to build this dock. It's also going to have a huge impact on the sea life in that area as well and the government really didn't like that. There are many businesses out there that were saying, hey, we need the stock, we need the tourism, we need the visitors, let's put it in place. Let's have a public referendum and let the citizens vote on it. Well, the government never put it out there for a vote, never put out that referendum, and nothing happened. And those plans slowly ended up back on the shelf gathering dust during our uh, health scare during 2020 and 2021. Hey, I like to use free Wi-Fi whenever I go somewhere, whether it's at an airport, a cruise terminal, cruise port, a coffee shop, wherever I can get it, I like to use it. I know it's not the safest thing to do with my data because when I'm on those free Wi-Fis, anything I put over the internet from there is available for anybody on that free Wi-Fi network to see, including hackers, and they could try to steal my passwords, banking information, and photos as well. To protect myself, I use a VPN from a company called Personal Internet Access. What this ha allows me to do is to surf uh, virtually invisibly on the internet. Nobody on that Wi-Fi network can see me, the people providing the internet access can't see me, and there's no logs kept of my traffic anywhere. What happens is as I put my information into my electronic device, it goes through what's called an electronic tunnel, and it goes through the Wi-Fi out onto the internet where it's not being tracked. Now when I say even PIA doesn't log it, they don't keep any logs of your traffic or anything that you do when you go on the internet and that's been proven in court by a third party auditor. This is something safe and secure to keep your data safe and secure as well when you're surfing on the internet. Now when you log into the personal internet access VPN, it will log in automatically to the closest server. 
Now in the United States, there's 50 high speed servers and they actually have 91 high speed servers in countries around the world as well, giving you access to data and information from other countries from wherever you are in the world. Now why would this benefit you to be able to access a server in another country? Well, if there's a streaming service that provides different content in another country, what you can do is you can log into that VPN server from wherever you are, then that streaming service will think you're there in that country and you'll be able to access that content and data. So you'll be able to watch those shows and those movies that you can't watch at home. So just think if you're an American and you want to watch something that's only available in the UK, just log into a UK server. If you're a Canadian and you want to log into something in the United States, just log into a United States server. Now, logging in when you launch the app is easy. It'll automatically search and go to the fastest server it can find. Now, I said that I use it when I'm traveling on my personal electronic device. And what's great is that with one subscription, you can put this on an unlimited number of devices that you have. You can put this on your phone, your tablet, your laptop, your computer, your PlayStation, your Xbox, your Apple TV, your Fire Stick. You can put it on some smart TVs as well, giving you streaming access to different countries uh, from whatever device you want to use and giving you protection on all those mobile devices that you use when you're out at coffee shops, cruise ports or airports or wherever. Now, this is something that I use all the time and I think it's great. It's safe. It's secure. It's super easy to use. By using the link I have below, this will get you 83% off of their fees. This will bring the monthly membership fee down to $2.03. And that's it. $2.03, you get to be able to stream from different countries. You get to protect your data whenever you're on any device on anywhere. Your local IP won't even be able to track you and keep a log on you as well. Your government won't even know what you're doing on the internet as well. You'll be able to have freedom, privacy, access on as many devices as you have for $2.03 a month. And if you don't like it, there's a no hassle money back guarantee that's good for 30 days. This has come up again with the government of the Grand Cayman. The official opposition party has come forward and said, yes, we need to add this dock space to provide more access to tourism, more access to cruise ships to the city, to the island nation as well. Uh, it started off with a need to increase the port capacity for container vessels for shipping to get in and out of the harbor, in and out of the nation, and there's been calls to make it a little bit bigger to accommodate up to four smaller sized cruise ships as well. Uh, Royal Caribbean and Carnival is still willing to fund, help fund this project and it's willing to go forward. But the government seems to be stalling on the issue. They haven't really made any uh, commitments yet and they don't seem to really want to comment on it. Uh, the local, the opposition government has called for a referendum again for the citizens to vote to say, hey, this is what the citizens want. And informal pollings has said that yes, the uh, local citizens do want this additional port and dock added to the uh, existing infrastructure. They want more people to come and visit the nation. When I look at different forums on Reddit, Facebook, uh, TripAdvisor, iCruise, all over the internet, I keep seeing people saying, oh, it's such a pain going to Grand Cayman because I never know if we're going to get there or not. We've got to ride those horrible tenders and I get sick on the waves or it always get canceled. We need a dock. They need a dock. And it's easy for us as cruisers to say that, to want that, to fill our needs when we're on a dream vacation. Because uh, that's how I look at a cruise. It's a dream vacation. I mean, it's ridiculous. You get to wait it on hands and foot and you get to go to these exotic locations to have a good time. But you have to remember we're in other countries and other nations who have different values and different customs and they may want things and look at things differently than we have. And we have to remember that we're visitors there in their country and we have to respect their wants and their needs. So if it comes right down to it and they decide they don't want to disturb the environment for a dock or they feel there would be too many tourists uh, in their tiny nation, 
then that's their decision. We need to accept that they've decided that and just be able to enjoy what we can. Uh, those ports of calls are not an extension of the ship. And there's too many people who, once on shore, are still as demanding as they are on the cruise ship as well as on shore. And it can be a little embarrassing sometimes. Uh, going forward, do I hope they build the dock? Yes, yes I do. Uh, I hate missing any dock. Um, I hate missing any port, but it's understandable to me. And when it happens, I'm like, oh, whatever. Uh, I just get another sea day, uh, yeah, I'll go and lounge about, maybe go see some activities I miss usually, uh, maybe sit at the buffet all day, no that's not a good idea I guess, uh, explore the ship a little bit or just lay out in the sun for that extra hour or two, but it gives me an opportunity to just relax. Uh, I find that when I do an excursion, I'm trying to do one that's quite active, it gets me out there, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and I'm exploring. and you know, experiencing whatever I can in the time I have. And uh, it's quite a busy day. It's a great day, great memories. But if I miss a day, if I miss a port because of the weather, I'm okay with it because I'm still on a cruise. I'm still having a great time. And the next time you're on a cruise and, you know, maybe it's Costa Maya you can't stop in or the city of Belize, uh, Grand Turk, well, no, not Grand Turk, but maybe at a private island that you have to tender, um, and it gets cancelled, you know, maybe, maybe these things will make you feel better. And that's, my name's Stuart, this is Ship to Shore Cruise News, and as always, get your cruise on. <laughs>